anointing that can really bless you is the anointing you honor. The anointing you honor. The anointing you honor. The anointing you honor. Is, listen, founding gate churches can only look like desert pastures if they honor this house. If they honor this house and they respect this house and they visit this house and they are part of this house and their destinies are connected to this house, then they will look like this house. You can never look like somebody whose DNA you don't carry. Oh, and when you see their headquarters church or their founding church in Boga, very, very nice. Then you go to their smaller church and it's not like that. It cannot be like that. It cannot be like that. Because whatsoever a man soweth, that also shall he what? Reap. What are you sowing into that thing to be like that thing? What are you sowing? And see people blaming the senior pastor, blaming the founder of a church, blaming the, the chairman of a church. And then, you know, we are part of this church. And then some two sit in the church and they are members. And they are, I've been a member here for 20 years. What is the value of a 20-year liability? You are 20 years old in the church, but you are a 20-year-old liability. Anybody who claps your hand, you have moved from liability to asset. I told mommy, I said, Pearl, this week, I'm not going to prepare notes. And I'm sure yesterday, when William saw my notes in the night, he said, what is this? What? Why well, you have my notes, don't you? <laughs> what is the man going to say? Because they were scared. Pastor Mike, I, I just gave him one page. I just took part of this book. I didn't add a word or a sentence. I just deleted some lines. And I copied it from my word version. And I pasted it. One page. Because every month I really prepare. I prepare. Oh, I don't sleep. Up to 3 a.m. Uh, you come and preach and you don't even know whether they understood you or not. So this explodables, I decided that I won't suffer. Because the And you know, because I'm a professional bomber, you see, the other topics, I need grace, I need to put in hard work to preach. But when it comes to throwing bomb. <laughs> no, 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 Jack. Throwing bomb is my profession. I've been throwing bomb from 1980. So as for firing you, it's not difficult for me at all. If I prepare to fire you, I'll kill you. But if I don't prepare, I'll only wound you and you recover. Come on, give a big clap of it to Jesus. I'll, I'll only inflict some wounds on you and you. Is the way low cost. More fire. <laughs> eh? Moses couldn't enter the promised land. Eh? Look at this man struggling with this thing. You need some stronger systems to be able to do this broadcast at the level we want it. Okay. Now, so Moses couldn't enter the promised land. Cities that reject the gospel, they are explodable, as explodable, like Sodom and Gomorrah. Let's read that scripture. And when you come into a house, he sent them to go and preach. Let, let's, let's start from the verse number 10. Let's start from verse 10. Oh, go to verse 9, verse 8. Go to verse 8. Go to verse 7. And as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. 
freely you have received and freely give. This is the explosion. Everybody say this is the explosion. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. Verse 9, provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purse. And you know, this provide neither silver nor gold nor brass in your purse. That is the place in the ministry. I'm telling you that by the grace of God, at my age now, I'm believing God to enter. At my age now, I'm believing God that I will not go about preaching and I need plenty of money. And then when I'm going, a church has to worry about my plane ticket and a church has to worry about my hotel and a church has to worry about this and that. No, I'm believing God that this time when I'm going, it's God who is sending me and I'll just pick up my bag and go. That is what I want to do. That's what I want to do. So when the pastor says, when are you coming? I say, just wait for me. At the time of your program, I'll be there. Where are you going to stay? Please, just relax. When I must be there, I'm a, I will be there. If it's a town, I don't know. I'll find a way. These days, we, we Google. You can Google everything. I can Google where I can find my hotel and I'll stay close to the church and then I'll go and preach for the pastor. And then just preach, sit in the plane and then come back home and so on and so forth. I want to enjoy that life. That you provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purse. Then verse number 10, it says, nor script for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet staves, for the workman is worthy of his meat. Verse number 12, and into whatsoever city you, or town you enter, inquire who is worthy, and there abide until you go. When you go into a city, look for somebody who is worthy. Look for somebody who is charitable. Look for somebody who is courteous. Look for somebody who will treat you well. Ladies and gentlemen, you will have to treat men of God and women of God and treat believers well. So if we are doing a ministration and Esther and, 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 and Efua come from Accra to come and help us to minister, we must treat them well. We must treat them well. We must be worthy. We must be honorable. So if they receive you, if you go into any town, look for who is worthy and stay there until you go from thence. Then verse number 12 says, and when you come into the house, salute it. When you come to the house, salute the house. And if the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. Let your peace. So when the Muslims enter a place, they say, Assalamu alaikum. Then they say, Alaikum salam. Peace be to this house. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be to this house. That means the man of God or the woman of God can determine your level of peace. Listen, if they say you will be in trouble, you will see trouble. If you want to be a happy church, make sure your pastor is happy. If you want to be a hop, happy husband, make sure your wife is happy. If you want to be a happy wife, make sure your wife, your husband is happy. What I mean is that your level of peace and happiness always depends on somebody's happiness. Now God has sent a messenger into your life. God has sent somebody with the gospel into your life. And God is saying, when that person, when you go, let your peace stay with them. Peace. They are carriers of peace. I know people say, well, you know, all these preachers, they are claiming to be this and that and all these believers. It's not just only the preachers. But I'm telling you people, even those of us who are just, let me call it, ordinary Christians, we carry a blessing. We determine the amount of peace that can be in a place. You know, anytime we are blessed, we are, we are going through something like, when we are sitting in a plane and we are going somewhere, I look at mommy, I hold her hand, I say, thank you. Thank you very much. And I say, all these blessings, they came because of you. The blessing of sitting in an aeroplane in my house, it came from my house, my wife, not from me. And that's because... My wife, before we married, or before we met in school, she has sat in plane before. But me, before we met in school, 
My highest means of transport was a donkey. And even the donkey, they only put me on it once. And when the dump, donkey jumped, nobody told me not to climb it again. But the woman came and she brought peace. She brought blessing. Every blessing you carry is because somebody brought it. Jesus said, put it this way, said, you are the light of the world and you are the salt of the earth. So any light you are seeing is because of the presence of somebody and any salt you are tasting is because of the presence of somebody. You, you know what, people? I, I keep telling you in, in this church all the time. And those of you that are watching online, hear me what I've been telling the church here. That whether Bogatanga likes it or not, our presence has added something to the Upper East region. You can, listen, no matter how you deny it, it's a reality. It's a reality. We have helped to change this land and the land will never be the same. And by the grace of God, more is coming. In the realm of the spirit, we are winning battles. We are winning battles. And this week, principalities and powers will come down they will explode they will be destroyed our prayer is working something the word we preach is light and we ourselves our lives are light that is why we provoke them like that I command every horn of idolatry every horn of witchcraft every horn of divination i command them to come down in the name of jesus and i pray that any idol anywhere any shrine anywhere that is speaking against the gathering of god's people this week we pray that the fire of god will fall into the shrines in the name of jesus let god arise and let his enemies be scattered in the name of jesus listen anytime you talk about them they hear so you must stop and condemn them before you continue. <laughs> Never mention the demo, the devil or demons without stopping to attack it. Because as soon as you mention them, they react. My Agadoski I tread on serpents and scorpions. And over all the power of the enemy, nothing shall by any means hurt any of us. Come on, clap your hands and pray. Clap your hands and praise him. Give him glory. Ah. Now look at this. 